Welcome to Shiva Peace Theater, a program to cleanse the stress palate with a glass of religion and an after-dinner mint of history. So enjoy yourself. Like the French say, Este perro que estoy comiendo lo necesita más crema de cacahuete, which of course means, allow the creative and well-thought-out lessons this show has to offer calm and intrigue you. I'm already halfway there. Tonight's topic is gothic art, but... I am so alone. <clears throat> um, that's not quite what I was talking about. What I meant was, tonight's topic is that of the style of art developed in the Gothic era, but more specifically, Gothic sculpture. With that, we come to this episode's main question. What defines Gothic sculpture, and why was it so innovative and controversial? Let's do a bit of history so we can better understand this. The Gothic art movement started in the 12th century of Common Era. The movement focused primarily on the creation of frescoes, stained glass, and sculpture. The Gothic art movement began with sculpture, the medium through which sculptors told religious and secular stories. Gothic sculpture's subject matter was derived from Old Testament and New Testament lessons, and was used to educate the people who saw the images, as well as beautify the buildings they were on or in. The sculptures most often depicted characters in the Bible, saints, or famous historical figures. The thing that set Gothic sculpture apart from other types was its humanization of characters. Figures that were once shown as stiff and uptight were softened, in a manner of speaking, and were made to appear more relaxed and accurate toward human disposition. A good example is this sculpture of the Virgin Mary and the Baby Jesus. At one point, her halo and upright demeanor would have overshadowed, in the view of some Gothic artists, the holiness and humanity of the whole situation. Here she is cradling Jesus lovingly and more motherly, one might argue, than typically shown in previous art. This, of course, resulted in some controversy. Many people lashed out at the artists who created these sculptures, accusing them of defacing the holiness of the Holy Mother, as well as other important religious figures. Though, to be fair, there was that one time when a sculptor was caught drawing a beard and mustache on the Virgin with a magic marker. There's always at least one black sheep. As universities were founded, a money-based economy was developed, and trade increased, secular sculpture became very popular within the Gothic art movement. A bourgeois class developed, and access to sculpting materials became more common and less expensive. The proliferation of secular Gothic sculpture followed this. The representation of secular themes and metaphors became so popular that the art was put even in churches. Some of the most famous examples of holy places containing Gothic sculpture were the Bamberg Cathedral in Germany, which at the time had the largest collection of 13th century European sculpture. Notre Dame. Hey Quasi, how's life been? I mostly just ring the bells and watch the townsfolk go about their business. Hey, that's kinda creepy. Oh well, to each his own. And another famous place is the Cathedral of Char... Charcoal? Sh Chartreuse? Sh Charlemagne? Huh? Seriously? That's how it's said? Okay. <clears throat> the Cathedral of Chartres in France. It was built in 1145 and burned down in 1194. There must have been one crazy party there that night. But it turned out okay, because it was rebuilt between 1194 and 1220. The legend of the cathedral goes like this. Since 876, the cathedral has housed a tunic that had been given to the cathedral by Charlemagne. I knew it! However, in actuality, it was a present from Charles the Bald, and it has been determined that the fabric for the tunic came from Syria, and it was woven in the first century. I liked Charles the Bald. We played college basketball together, but he was always overshadowed by his brothers Ronald the Tall and Richard the Jumpy. So thank you for joining me tonight on Shiva Peace Theater. Tune in next week to enter the holy octagon of Cardinal Kickboxing.